How's it going Rogues Gallery and welcome to another Flesh and Blood video here on Red Zone Rogue. Today I am joined by Bravo, the only character in Flesh and Blood with a mustache as fabulous as my own. Today we're going to talk about some Everfest spoilers, basically all the ones up to this point, not including yesterday's, basically, today's. We're not, I'm not talking about the ones that are coming out today, but for you it'll be yesterday. It's a little, you know, wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey, but without further ado, let's jump right in. Uh, today, it's going to be uh, a long one. we got a lot of cards to talk about. I do want to give a shout-out to FabDB before we get started. They are a sponsor of this channel. They're fantastic. They're the premier source for your flesh and blood deck building and database needs. It's what I use to build my decks. It's what I, I'm going to use to build my Everfest decks, and I think you should check them out. Also, check out my affiliate link with, like, Channel Fireball and my online store and all, all of that good stuff, but I can't wait to start talking about some cards, so we're just gonna, we're cutting the, cutting the preamble short, we're just getting in. We got some Skull Crushers here. All right, so Skull Crushers. Skull Crushers is a uh, brute uh, majestic equipment. It's an arm piece, which is kind of hilarious actually, which means that you cannot use the gambler's gloves. And it says, whenever you roll a five or six on a die, your brute attacks gain plus one uh, this turn, which is awesome. That's all brute attacks. Uh, so your weapons and your attack actions, that's really sweet. And then whenever you roll a one on a die, destroy the crushers because of course. It also has a defensive one and has battle worn, which is sweet. So you want to block with this probably early so you don't accidentally destroy it. But uh, yeah, this card's awesome. I know a lot of brute players out there who are going to love this card. Um, shout out to Ian Kenderdine, Yazi, and all of the other brute players who are going to love this card and play the crap out of it. So I hope I hope all y'all out there who love this get a cold foil one in your Everfest packs. I think this card's sweet, by the way. I think it's really cool. Also, like I said, I think it's hilarious that it's on a gloves, and so you can't have gambler's gloves and this, which is just hilarious. Next up, we have Ready to Roll. This card was spoiled by um, some great dudes, friends of the channel, uh, the Spike Feeders. They're all great people. And it says, uh, this is a KO specialization. So one of my predictions is on track. We do have specializations, which is sweet. I don't know if we're going to have specializations for every character, but it looks like we have the, the specializations for the crew characters, at least, which is sweet. So this one's for KO. It's a zero cost card, pitches for three, blocks for three, which is pretty good. All that stuff is pretty good for Brute, especially with all, a lot of the cards not blocking at all. And it says, if you would roll one or more dice this turn, instead, roll that many dice plus one and ignore the lowest roll, which is awesome. This is so sweet. I love this card. I love everything about this card. It's just like... It's a, it's a gambler's it's a gambler's dream, right? And if you combine combine this with the gambler's gloves, you can like do a ton of like re rolls, and you're basically rolling like what four sets of dice, kind of. And I don't know, it's just crazy. So uh, yeah, uh, ready to roll is awesome. Next up, we have more dice rolling with the high roller. This is the red pitch version of the card. If the, if we're gonna have multiple versions of the cards, by the way. I will uh, say what they are and that they have multiple versions, but we're not going to talk about all of the versions because we have a lot of cards to get through. So uh, this is High Roller. It's a rare. This one does have three versions. It uh, has uh, Intimidate on it, which is great. And it says, if you have rolled a four, five, or six on a die this turn, instead Intimidate twice, which is gross. This card's probably randomly going to kill me in like Ultimate Pit Fight or Blitz or something. They're just going to Intimidate my whole hand and just smack me for like 12, which has happened before without this card, so yeah, uh, so this one's pretty good. Uh, the yellow version is uh, on a five or six, and the uh, blue version is only on a six, where you get to do that double intimidate, but you, you get a free intimidate either way. Is this better than Barraging Beatdown? Probably not, but do you want to play this with Barraging Beatdown? Hmm, maybe, maybe. I love, I love fun cards like this. I love this whole, like, dice roll thing. Also, look at this art. I want to point out the art where the brute is just hanging out in like a gambling parlor or something and there's like some noble with white hair in the background pondering it. He's like, hmm, yes. Good, good rolling, brute. Anyway, <laughs> let's continue to Wild Ride, spoiled by a um, someone that I've mentioned already, good friend of mine, Ian Kenderdine. Uh, so Wild Ride is, he's riding the pig, man. He's got the big pig. This is a two cost, six attack, uh, brute uh, attack action uh, with zero defense. Uh, the yellow version comes in for five and the blue version comes in for four, but you definitely want to play with this uh, red version if you're going to play with it. And it says, 
When you attack with Wild Ride, draw a card, then discard a random card. If a card with six or more attack is discarded this way, Wild Ride gains go again. So I've seen a lot of people compare this to Pulping. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of similarities with it. I mean, you just run both of them. You can just run both of them. Also, this is a common card, so you can just play this in commoner too. So even if this isn't like good enough to be played in um, constructed formats, which it, it might not be, to be completely honest, um, you can play it in commoner. So also, he's just riding the pig, man. Like sometimes you just want to ride the pig. <laughs> Next we have Bravo himself, Bravo star of the show, and uh, I should do the. Can I do the pose? Bravo. Um. He's uh, gonna make that a thumbnail. I'm not gonna make that a thumbnail. This is a uh, a gross hero. Um, some people think he's overpowered. I don't necessarily think he's overpowered. I think he's good. I don't know. Okay, we'll just talk about. It. Let's talk about it. So, Bravo star of the show. First of all, he is an adult hero. He's not a young hero. So you play this in classic constructed, not in blitz. He has 40 health, four hand size. He has essence of all of them, just all of them. Ice, I, uh, ice, earth, and lightning. And it says, at the start of your turn, you may reveal an earth, an ice, and a lightning card from your hand. So the pulses are going to be really sweet for this. If you do, the next attack action card with cost three or greater you play this turn gains plus two, dominate, and go again. You know, just, just casually. All right. So that ability is strong, but the you being able to pull off that ability is going to be very difficult. Like the stars are really going to have to align for you to be able to do that. However, just having Earth, Ice, and Lightning cards in your deck, I think is a big deal. He's going to have the biggest pool in the entire game, like the biggest card pool in the entire game. So I think he's going to be good, right? I think he's going to be good. I think people are going to do some gross stuff with him with Bravo Specializations and Awakening and the one of the new cards we'll talk about coming up. So uh, I think it's going to be good. How good? I don't know. I, I mean, honestly don't know. But I definitely know people are going to try to break this. And I think um, the potential is there to be broken. So, I don't know. We'll see. Next up, we have Volda Brightax. Oh, I love Volda. So, uh, we talked about this already, but we're going we're gonna to cover all of the cards here. So, Volda Brightax is a young guardian hero with 21 health, which is pretty sweet. I am absolutely chomping at the bit to play with Volda in uh, Ultimate Pit Fight. She seems like an amazing hero for multiplayer. And it says, whenever an opponent draws a card during an action phase... Create a Seismic Surge token for each card this drawn this way. So, punish your opponents for drawing cards. Really sweet. At the start of your turn, if you control three or more Seismic Surge tokens, cards you own with Crush gain Dominate this turn. Yeah, that's sweet. <laughs> this is sweet. Vald is sweet. Um, I really hope she gets a specialization in the set. I, I kind of don't think she's going to get one. But a Vald specialization would be awesome. And uh, I think she's going to be a ton of fun in um, multiplayer. Like, that's what I want to play Vault in. And obviously Blitz, but multiplayer. I think is where she's at. Uh, next up, we have the card I was alluding to. This is Pulverize. Pulverize is gross. Also, look at that big One Punch Man energy. That is, so, that is One Punch Man energy, man. He's like all the he's like all the way back coming in. All right, so <laughs> this card is is absurd in every every uh, sense of the way. And, and it, I'm getting ahead of myself. This card's gross is what I'm trying to say. So it blocks for three. Uh, it costs 10 to play, which is uh, almost impossible, but it has this heave ability. It has heave three, and it says, at the beginning of your end phase, if Pulverize is in your hand and you have an empty arsenal zone, you may pay three resources and put Pulverize face up into your arsenal. If you do, create three seismic surge tokens. So this like basically puts Pulverize on layaway, right? You put it on layaway, and then you come back and it's cheaper because you get three seismic surge tokens, so it's like at least three cheaper. Um, which makes it playable, right? You can, you can actually play it. And it also says, when Pulverize hits a hero, their first attack during their next turn has minus four. Uh, and it attacks for 14. It attacks for 14. That's absurd. How are you going to block this? I love it's like, when it hits a hero, yeah, it's going to hit a hero because it's attacking for 14. Imagine, like, Pulverize, and then someone pummels it. This is disgusting. Pulverize is disgusting. Um... And then you combine this with like Awakening and um, any other Seismic Surge tokens or maybe Bravo's new ability or it's just, it's just, this is going to kill me at some point. All right, next up we have Macho Grande. 
Love the name. So Machu Grande is a seven drop, three defense. It's a common card, so mm, in commoner. It's it, tax for 10, which is pretty good, and has a dominate. So this is a very simple card, right? This is just a very, very clean card. Tax for 10, blocks for three, has a you know seven, seven cost, and dominate. Uh, the uh, yellow comes in for nine, and the, the blue comes in for eight, which is still like really good. Like seven for eight uh, with dominate is still pretty good. So I think this card's gonna see play in commoner for sure. Outside of that, I don't know. Next up, we have Spring Tidings. Uh, this card is gross too. There's a lot of gross cards in Everfest. So Spring Tidings, zero drop Benji specialization. Um, <laughs> all right, all right. It says when Spring Tiding hits, draw a card for each other attack action card with two or less base attack you control on the combat chain. Go again. You know what this card reads? Block me. It means, it reads, you must block me or else you're gonna get punched in the face really hard. So uh, this card combined with a bunch of other like two or less cards or two or less base attack with go again that are really cheap to play is pretty gross. I know people have shown stuff like, uh, oh, you can wombo combo like this or that, but you know, it, it folds the second you just block it. You block it. Basically, <laughs> Spring Tidings, you block this card. Um, and uh, if you're playing against Benji, you have to know that this is going to be coming. So you need to save your blocks for this card. Like, save your equipment, your 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 skull cap and everything, because you're going to need to. This card's really good. Next up, we have Winds of Eternity. I freaking love the art on this card. We have uh, what looks to be... Um, Good old uh, chicken katsu here, but like we have like the spirits of like these like mist spirits. I don't know. It looks really, really cool. I can't wait to go to Mysteria and have all these like mist spirit stuff. It's going to be sweet. All right. So this one is a zero drop. It uh, is a majestic. So it just has one one version of it. it has combo. If hundred wins was the last attack on the combat chain, wins of eternity gains plus two. And when this hits, shuffle all, all card cards named hundred wins you own on the combat chain into your deck. And so you're like, okay, wh okay, what, what's 100 wins? Well, here's 100 wins. 100 wins is a zero cost uh, ninja attack action. This one attacks for three. I didn't go over the other one. The other one attacks for two and blocks for three. So it doesn't attack all that well. Um, it does get pumped up to four, so zero for four. This itself doesn't have go again, but you really want that on hand effect. Shuffle all those 100 wins back into your deck. And so this is 100 wins. It is a, once again, zero drop, three attack with two defense. It has just unconditional go again, which by itself is pretty good. Uh, it says combo. If 100 wins was the last attack on the combat chain, this attack gains plus one for each other card named 100 wins you control on the combat chain. You want to make a 100 wins deck and then cap it off with your wins of eternity and shuffle them all back. So you want to just be like 100 wins, 100 wins, 100 wins, 100 wins, wins of eternity. Um, that's basically what you want to do. This is a really cool card. Um, this is kind of power creeping head jab, right? Because it's basically head jab. Because head jab's the, the same thing. Zero cost with go again for three, but this one also has an ability. Head jab does not. Uh, and this one, obviously, the, there's a yellow and a blue. The, the yellow does two damage and the blue does one. They're all really good. The fact that they cost zero are really good with Kadachis. Um, blocks for two, but who cares? You're just going to throw them all at your opponent's face. I don't know. It's cool. Um, Helm of the Sharp Eye is the next one. I know a lot, a lot of, uh, warrior players were really, really clambering for a new warrior helmet. And here we go. We have a new warrior helmet. And, uh, this one is pretty good for <laughs> Bolton, especially Charge Bolton. All right, so what does it do? So it is a warrior helmet. It's equipment. It has Battle Worn, which is great. Blocks for one. Attack reaction for a resource. Destroy Helm of Sharp Eye. Banish the top card of your deck. You may play at this combat chain. Activate this ability only if you control a weapon with attack greater than twice its base attack. So with Duskbane, Raiden Duskbane, you just get it, right? Because Raiden's, Raiden's attack is zero. So uh, getting its attack pumped up makes it uh, bigger than zero. So uh, yeah, this is really good for that. It's probably also pretty good for like sabers too, right? Um, yeah, it's pretty good. People are going to play this card. It's good. Next up, we have Oath of Steel. I love the art on this card as well. Uh, it's a zero drop warrior action. Another good one for, for like, uh, for Bolton. 
maybe even Kasai too. So it says, whenever you attack with a weapon this turn, put a plus one counter on it. At the beginning of your end phase, remove all plus one counters from weapons you control. So this is like your like Illumina Ascension uh, Bolton where you just kind of wombo combo and just like, -da -da, like slice and dice with your swords. That's what this is. Like, that's what this is really good for. Um, I mean, just attacking like with your weapons here and there is not too bad either, right? But um, it's going to really shine in like a Bolton combo deck. But like I said, it's probably pretty good in Kasai too, right? Next up, we have In the Swing, another really, really cool piece of artwork here. I love how she's got like a, a tabard on. We don't see a lot of tabards in, in, in uh, Flesh and Blood. More tabards. Anyway, this is a, a zero drop warrior attack reaction with a defense of three. It says play in the swing only if you have attacked with two or more or if, if you have attacked two or more times with weapons this turn. Target weapon attack gains plus three. Okay, so this is, an, uh, this is a reaction for zero that pumps for three. And then, of course, the uh, yellow does two and the blue does one. Not good with Dorinthia, but uh, good with... Well, I mean, if you want to do, like, Axe Dorinthia or something, this could be this could be okay. Um, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, this is going to be good with dual wielding, basically. Any of the, the, the warriors that can dual wield and do it really well will be really good at, good with this. I mean, once again, Kasai, Bolton. Um, there's a lot of good stuff for Bolton in this set, actually. Um, but, uh, you know, not bad. It's also common, so anytime you see a common card, you can be like, oh, pretty good for commoner, probably. And I think it's maybe good for commoner. I don't know if you can pull it off. Next up, we have Dissolution Sphere. This is a, a majestic um, mechanologist item. I think mechanologist so far has weird cards. First of all, I love the art here, but it's a two drop item. Doesn't block at all because it's an item. It says it enters the arena with a steam counter, so only one. At the beginning of your action phase, destroy the solution sphere unless you remove a steam counter from it. Whenever your hero would be dealt exactly one damage, prevent it. Okay. This is a sideboard card. <laughs> this is a sideboard card. You put this in against rune chance, basically, and then any other like small little ping stuff. So maybe like ninja or something, you can like prevent their kadachis from hitting you. I don't know. But like I see this and I'm just like, yo, it's not this on this side. This. This guy right here, this rune chant man. Um, this is like big middle finger to rune chant man here. And um, other than that, it doesn't have a lot of applications. This is just like strictly sideboard tech. Um, and it lasts for a couple turns, which is which is fine because you know you, you last for the turn that you play it, and then you remove a counter on it, and it lasts for like one more one more go around. It's interesting, cool design space, sideboard card. Next up we have Signal Jamma. Signal Jammer is a uh, Blue pitch, so three pitch, zero cost item. Okay, I like that. It enters the arena with a steam counter on it. At the beginning of the action phase, destroy signal jammer unless you remove a steam counter from it. Sounds familiar. Each hero can't play more than one non-attack action card each turn. Interesting. So, once again, sideboard tech, right? This is this is sideboard tech. This is like not very good against some classes. It's gonna be really, really good against other classes. Um, this is basically just another, like a middle finger to like wizard and like classes that want to pop off with non-attacks, like maybe rune blade. Um, I think it's hilarious with dash, both of these cards, because you can start the game with them if you want. They only last, you know, a couple turns, but maybe those are the turns that you need to like get into the game and, and like establish some tempo. I don't know. Uh, I'm not a huge mechanologist player. I do like mechanologist, but these are just like really solid sideboard tech that are like really, really targeted against certain strategies. Next up we have, oh yes, my personal spoiler card and my favorite spoiler card to date, we have the Dread Boar. I love this card. Uh, this one, if you haven't seen my spoiler video on it, it is quite campy, but please go, please go watch it. I think it's a lot of fun. I think this card is archetype defining. It is that good. It will formulate its own archetype around it and it's going to be sweet. I don't know how good it's going to be. I don't know if it's going to elevate Azalea up, but I think it'll move her out of the meme tier at least. It'll move her into a tier where people will actually be a little bit afraid of playing against her. So what does it do? Once per turn action, 
For one resource, you may put an arrow card from your hand face up into an empty arsenal zone you control, which is great. So it means it'll work with New Horizon. It will require some more setup because it's not an instant, but it still works with New Horizon. And it says, if you do, it gains plus one until end of turn. Go again, which is pretty sweet. And then it has a static ability that is gross that says, arrows you control have defense reactions can't be played from hand this chain link. And it just makes all of your arrows have that ability not arrows put into the arsenal with this effect just all arrows have that it's just a static effect and it's like pretty good it's really good especially if you combine it with stuff like remorseless which says defense reactions can't be played from the arsenal so this plus remorseless means your opponent can't play defense reactions at all which means you can really push through those nasty on hit effects like remorseless or red in the ledger and those are what's going to really, really hamper your opponent. It's not going to be the damage that you deal to them, though you will be doing some amount of damage, right? It's going to be these really, really nasty on-hit effects that just absolutely shut down your opponent. Like, imagine Dreadbore and then um, pumping up a Sleep Dart and hitting, you know, like a, a Chain or like, a, or even like a... a you know, Red in the Ledger or something against Chain or Sleep Dart against Levi or something like, there's some really, really sweet applications here. I think this card's really good and I think it'll see play. I'm definitely gonna be building, building a deck around it and I think a lot of other Ranger players are as well. It's sweet. Next up we have a Battering Bolt that goes really, really well with the Dread Boar. So Battering Bolt is a two drop Ranger arrow, attacks for six. The first Ranger arrow that got attacks for six. So finally we'll have something we can block the um, illusionist uh, cards with, so that, that's great. Blocks for three. It says, when Battering Bolt hits a hero, they reveal their hand and discard all cards other than action cards. So, you know, reactions, instants. Then they lose one life for each card discarded this way. So combine this with stuff, you know, like the Dread Boar, which, you know, makes it so they can't block with uh, reactions from hand. Then they're gonna have to discard the reactions and then lose life for all of the reactions that they just had to discard. It's sweet. There, there's some stuff here, man. Like, I don't know if it's gonna be like super top tier or anything. It might, you know, be like mid middle range tier, like this kind of like hate bears -y style deck where it, it might be better depending on what's, you know, the top in the meta or whatever. But I think there's something here. There's the makings of something and it's exciting. Next up we have Vexing Quill Hand. This is a rune blade arms equipment which is interesting because it'll replace the um grasp of the arc knight and is this better than grasp of the arc knight no but it's interesting and i think it'll be cool in blitz so it's um has action destroy vexing quill hand create two rune chant tokens go again and it also has arcane barrier one so first of all it's a it's a you know strict upgrade over the null rune gloves so you just run this instead of null rune gloves if you need null rune but also the fact that you can just create two rune chants on command with just no downside. That's interesting. It's really interesting. Maybe this is good for combo, but if you're playing like a uh, Viscerai OTK or, or, you know, some kind of combo deck, you definitely want the, the armor, right? You want the block on the grasp of the Arc Knight. So it's not just cut and dry. I don't know. I don't know. Probably not. But I mean, if you're going to do Arcane Barrier, you're just going to run it anyway. So... Probably a sideboard card, but it's cool. And the art is like gnarly, dude. Like <laughs> the art is so gnarly. Look at those hooks. Look at those hooks. All right, next we have Icelander. I've already done a whole video on Icelander. Icelander is awesome. She's very scary. I think she's gonna be really, really fun to build around. She is an elemental wizard hero. She's young. She has 18 health, which is three more than the young Kano. She has essence of ice, so she can have um, ice cards as well as generics and wizard cards in her deck. And she says, if it is not your turn, you may play non-attack action cards with blue color strips from your arsenal as though they were an instant. Um, you can do potions. You can do basically whatever you want. I think like an OTK deck with Icelander could be really cool where you just like get a whole bunch of potions and items. And there's a ton of items and potions in Everfest. And we'll talk about those. But I think I think she could be really cool. And she also says, whenever you play an ice card during an opponent's turn, create a frostbite token under their control. Now, there's not a ton of great ice cards for that right now there are a couple but um there's not really going to be in, any in everfest i don't think so um that's what we got right now um you know there's that one that you know does a discard there's, there's another one too but um i think it's just interesting i think it's really interesting 
Next we have Kraken's Aether Vein. This card is sweet because it has the three best words in any card game. Draw a card. I didn't even say that on the screen. Draw a I don't know. Draw a card. It says draw a card on it. Once per turn instant, three resources. Deal one arcane damage to target opposing hero. Draw a card for each arcane damage dealt this way. Now currently, there is no way to pump this card. So there's no way to get more value out of this. But if your opponent's not running any arcane barrier or since it's an instant, you can do this after they've played all their cards if they have no cards left in hand. You can do this, ping, and then you know have an extra card, or rather, kind of like cycle a card, honestly. Do, do one arcane damage to your opponent, and then you get a draw a card if it deals the damage, and basically replaces that blue card that you pitched. Um, so, I don't know. I, I think this is good. Is it better than Crucible of Aetherweave? I think people are just going to play Crucible of Aetherweave, to be honest. I think this card's still pretty sweet, though. It, it has cool applications for the future, for sure. Uh, next up, we have the Crown of Reflection. I think this is this is a shenanigans card. This is a shenanigans card. So Crown of Reflection is an illusionist equipment headpiece. So any illusionist can use this. Currently we only have Prism, but fingers crossed for a new illusionist in the future. Has instant destroy Crown of Reflection. Destroy target illusionist aura you control. If you do, you may put an illusionist aura from your hand into the arena with cost less than or equal to the destroyed the aura destroyed this way. Activate Crown of Reflection only during your action phase. So, you can't activate this on your opponent's turn. So, you can't do any weird Arclight Sentinel stuff on your opponent's turn with this. Um, but I still think there's like some weird shenanigans you can do. Uh, Prism players out there, let me know in the comments down below. I'm sure you can do stuff with like the parables and I don't know. I'm, I'm sure there's some weird things you can do. Um, you can definitely get like free attacks off of them because, you know... You can attack with your auras. I don't know. There's, there's probably some weird stuff you can do. Sweet card. Really, really cool art. Shout out to uh, Arik uh, Lindner for the art on this. Really, really cool. Next up, we have Fractal Replication. This card is nuts and awesome. It's beautiful and crazy. <laughs> that's, what this, that's what this card is. Beautiful and crazy. All right. So what does this thing do? It's a zero cost star attack star defense illusionist attack action uh this card is basically everything that mutated mass wishes it was uh it says when you play or defend with fractal replication it gains the abilities and all effects of all illusionist attack action cards on the, on the combat chain fractal replications attack is equal to the greatest base attack base attack among illusionist attack action cards on the combat chain, and same is true for its defense. Okay, um, this card is really good. It, it feels kind of like a Blazing Ether for illusionists, right? So Blazing Ether is the wizard card that you play and you deal basically like X damage, where X is the amount of arcane damage you've already dealt this turn. This kind of feels similar to that. You know, they both cost zero. Um, it's, it's, very, it's very interesting. Um, one thing to note, it doesn't work with a lot of the illusionist attack action cards right now because so like Herald of Erudition, for example, right? If it hits, you get to draw two cards and that's amazing and getting that ability would be amazing. But also if it hits, it immediately goes into your soul. So it's no longer on the combat chain, right? I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Let me know if I'm wrong. Judges, judges, let me know if I'm wrong with that. But since they hit and immediately go into the soul, they're no longer on the combat chain, so therefore they would not gain the abilities and effects of those cards. It's interesting. It also makes Phantasmify really sweet and very interesting. So Phantasmify is a card that uh, pumps up an attack, but then it turns it into an illusionist attack and also gives it Phantasm. So you could, for example, pump up a Command and Conquer, right? So you can play like a Command and Conquer... Um, that somehow has go again. And uh, and then, uh, you know, play Phantasmify, play your Command and Conquer that randomly has go again, and then you can play the Fractal Replication, and then it will have the same base attack as the Command and Conquer and the Command and Conquer's effects, as well as the, um, as well as the, uh, what, what you call it, the, the Phantasma, the Phantasma effect. Interesting. This card's interesting. This is a big brain card. I think it's good. I think it'll see play somewhere. This is just, it's just, it's just so good. Uh, next up, we have the Arcanite Skullcap. We're not going to talk about this one too much because this is the only reprint. I'm just going to show it here. In case you didn't know, Arcanite Skullcap is getting reprinted. Probably non-foil. We don't actually know, but 
If it's like Crucible of War, where the uh, Spring Tunic was reprinted as a non-foil, this will probably also get reprinted as a non-foil. So if you don't have one, now is a good chance to get another, you know, get one, probably for cheaper than they already are. So keep that in mind. Skullcap's a great card. It goes in so many decks, you're gonna want to have one. If you're a Flesh and Blood player, you need to get a Skullcap. So yeah, Skullcap. Next up is the Arcane Lantern, weird card, and also, I don't have an image of it here, has a freaking awesome cold foil full art version that is just, it's so good. It looks so good. So Arcane Lantern is a very, very, um, you know, simple card, right? It's, it's a generic equipment offhand, right? So you need to have a one hand. So I guess like ninjas and warriors and um, guardians can use this, right? Not many other classes, uh, unless they don't want to have any weapon at all. But it has Arcane Barrier 1. So you can get up to Arcane Barrier 5, which is a you know easy set of Null Rune plus this. You can get up to even higher than that if you have higher Arcane Barrier on some of your pieces. So I don't know. If you want to go full Arcane Barrier tank, you can do that. Um, sideboard card. I don't know. Yeah, sideboard card. I mean, it's cool. The cold foil, the full art cold foil is like freaking amazing. Next up, we have Bingo. <laughs> Bingo is a sweet card. So this is a one drop, five attack, three block, majestic generic attack action with crazy clown art. It says when Bingo hits a hero, they reveal a card from their hand. If an attack action card is revealed this way, um, Bingo gains go again. If a non-attack action card is revealed this way, draw a card. So the key things here. Your opponent reveals a card from their hand, right? They get to choose. It's not random. So they get they bait your opponent basically gets to choose what's going on here. If you get to draw a card or if this has go again. Um It's a weird card. <laughs> it's really weird. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it. Is it good? Maybe. Probably. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It's 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 really weird. Uh I I think bingo is gonna be interesting. I think people are definitely gonna try try to make it like be really good. I, I like it for like Shiana and like Cavdane. Like I think it's gonna be cool in those kind of decks for sure. Outside of that, I don't know, maybe. It's a one attack, one drop five attack card that is either going to draw you a card or, wait a minute, if an attack action card or a non-attack action card, if they reveal an instant, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> well, there's that. All right, next up we have Fire Breathing. Fire Breathing, I think, is going to be really, really sweet in certain decks. So Fire Breathing is a two-drop generic action, majestic, uh, beautiful artwork by Marco Wolfer. Three block, three attack, instant for one, I was going to say red mana, for one uh, um, resource, Fire Breathing gains plus one attack, activate this, only, activate this ability only while Fire Breathing is attacking, so you can't use it to pop um, illusionist cards, which, who cares? Like, you want to attack with this, and you want to, like, pitch like your whole hand of blues and smack your opponent because you're playing a uh, viscerai otk <laughs> that's why i mean that's what this is going to be really good in right viscerai otk you go for the otk and you pitch all the, all the blue cards you got and smack them for a crap load of damage um yeah Th this is pretty good i don't know i think it's cool this is this is definitely like a, a sweet like build around card or it could be really good once again in like your cav dane and your shiana decks are running a bunch of blues anyway Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's cool. Also, the, the three attack is interesting for, like, minimalism and that kind of stuff. So, I don't know. It's cool. Next up, we have Nick Knack Brick a Brack. <laughs> I love this card. I actually really love this card. So, Nick Knack Brick a Brack. Three drop generic action to defense. Um, the fact that it costs three is pretty rough, to be honest. But it says, as an additional cost to play Nick Knack Brick a Brack. You may destroy any number of copper, silver, and or gold you control. And we have had cards that do silver in this set. So it says, search your deck for a card with amulet, potion, or talisman. Rip Crazy Brew, because Crazy Brew does not have that, any of those words. Um, put it into your arena, then shuffle. For each four copper, two silver, and or one gold destroyed this way, repeat this process. So you just get a bunch of potions and amulets. You get a bunch of bric-a-brac. You get a bunch of bric-a-brac. You go get your bric-a-brac. Um, is this card good? I don't know. It's fun. I don't care if it's good. It's fun. Am I going to play this? Hell yeah, I'm playing this. I'm playing this in Ultimate Pit Fight like a million percent. 
Like, there's no way I'm not playing this in Ultimate Pit Fight. Like, that Cavdane deck that I played, brick a brack, get in there. Just get, get, get it right in there. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to play this card. It's weird and janky, and I love it. Next up, we have This Rounds on Me. This is a sweet card. So, this is a one drop, three block, blue pitch card. Each hero draws a card. Yo! Until the start of your next turn, attacks that target you have minus one. Yo, go again. This card's sweet. I love this card. Once again, ultimate pit fight. Ultimate pit fight. My voice is going out because this is just talking for a long time. Ultimate pit fight is an amazing format, highly underrated, and we're going to be playing a lot of it on the channel this year. So if you watch the ultimate pit fight game, there is going to be more and it's going to be awesome and fun. We're just going to have just going to have a grand old time playing a bunch of ultimate pit fight. And I think this card is fantastic for it. It's one of my low key. One of my goals for the year is to show people that flesh and blood has casual formats. You can play them casually just for fun. And they are an absolute blast to play. Some of the most fun I've ever had playing card games in my entire life. And if you know me, I have played this way, this way, lots of card games. I played lots of card games. So yeah, ultimate pit fight is the real deal. It's a ton of fun. You should play it. I think cards like this are going to be amazing in it. Next up, we have Life of the Party. So this one is a rare, first of all. Amazing Sam Yang artwork. Um, this is... Um, uh, the red does four attack. Yellow does three. Blue does two. Two drop. You may discard or destroy a card you control named Crazy Brew rather than pay Life of the Party's cost. If you do... Choose all modes, otherwise choose one at random. Life of the Party gains, when it hits, gain two life. It basically gets the crazy brew abilities. When it hits, Life of the Party, uh, you gain two life, or it gets plus two, or it gains go again. So kind, kind of the crazy brew abilities. Um, this card's sweet. Once again, get right on into my Cavdane deck. Um, outside of that, I don't know, but I think it's really interesting that it's naming crazy brew specifically. Um... And I don't think Crazy Brew is going to be in the set. So that's super weird. Next up, we have High Striker. Um, do you like Copper Tokens? I hope you like Copper Tokens because we're going to be making a crap load of them. Zero drop. The next time an attack you control hits this turn, create six Copper Tokens. Go again. The This is really interesting because the yellow creates four and the blue creates two. Um, other than that, I don't just copper tokens, man. Like, I don't know what you want to say. Just you want to make some copper tokens? Play the high striker. You be playing some weird Cavdane deck with like cash ins and stuff. I know I am. I'm gonna be playing high striker. Uh, outside of that, I don't know how good it's gonna be, but it's sweet, and you get to make some copper tokens. Next up, we have pick a card. Pick any card. Uh, this one's interesting. I don't know if this is good, but once again, it's very interesting. It's a zero drop. Look at target opponent's hand, name a card. Choose a card at random from their hand and reveal it. If it's the named card, create a silver token. Mm, silver token. Repeat this process thrice. <laughs> you get to do it three times. Uh, repeat this process thrice. So you basically get to do it four times. Um, creating coppers are going to be really sweet for cards like Knickknack, Brick a Brack, and for drawing cards. So for, for copper tokens, by the way, it's um, it's uh, basically an item that sits around and you can pay three resources to destroy it to draw a card. The uh, coppers are four resources to destroy it to draw a card. I don't know. This card's fun. Once again, I think it's going to be a really fun like casual card. Especially if you're going to be doing shenanigans with silver tokens. Next up we have Smashing Good Time. I like this card. This card is good at smashing things. This card is basically plunder run, but you get a smash, <laughs> you get a smash things too. All right, so it's a zero drop. If you played it from your arsenal, the next attack action card you play this turn gains plus three, just like plunder run. And it also says the next time an attack action card hits a hero this turn, you may destroy an item they controlled with cost two or less. So this is a generic item removal card, which is good. I mean, having hate like this in the game is pretty good. Um, by the way, the, the yellow version, it's a plus two on the attack, and the blue version is a plus one on the attack. Um, I think this card, once again, sideboard card, will eventually see play. Getting that pump is pretty good. Getting the destroy the item is pretty good. I mean, like, this is this is good for, like, 
future proofing things. If, if items become a big deal, you have a way to smash them. Next up, we have even bigger than that. <laughs> I, lo I love the uh, I love the art on this card. Look at all these Ranger Bros. And they, or, well, I guess the middle guy, he's got a shield on his back, but dude, dude on the left is definitely a Ranger Bro. Look at that bearded, that braided beard. Anyway, so this is a generic instant zero drop. Play even bigger than that, only if you have dealt physical damage this turn. You know, the little damage with that symbol. Opt three. So the, the yellow ops two, the blue ops one. Then reveal the top card of your deck. If it has greater attack than the amount of damage you've dealt this turn, create a quicken token and draw a card. Uh, this card's a little busted. Uh, this card's uh, pretty good. Well, okay. It's good. It's really good. But you... You have to hit it with the opt, right? Otherwise, it does literally nothing. So it either does nothing or it's like... Disgusting. So it's either does nothing or disgusting. And you could probably build your deck so it's disgusting. So the end result, I think, is this card is just super good. Um, it's, it's definitely going to see play in these like super hyper aggro decks. You just have to be careful because if your opponent just takes it, they're like, oh, I just take it. Then, like, like if they take four, then you can't rip a, a four drop, right? It needs to have greater attack, not equal to or greater. It has to have greater. So I think it's good. Really good. Yeah. Next up, we have, oh, we're gonna have a, we have a crap load of items now. So we're gonna try to get through the items real quick. We have a ton of them. So we have Amulet of Echoes. So zero drop item. Go again, which is great. Not all the items have go again. So having go again is really good. Instant, destroy Amulet of Echoes. Target hero discards two cards. Activate this ability only if they've played two or more cards with the same name this turn. Okay, so a couple things here. One, sideboard, obviously. Two, um, they can see it coming because this is an item that sits around on the field. So you play this item and you telegraph to your opponent that you have this item and they're just like, okay, I just won't play two cards. I just won't play two of the same card. So you, it's a highly play aroundable. It, it's probably really good against certain like combos, but outside of that, it's like useless. Yep. <laughs> uh, now we have Amulet of Haven Call. Um, what's in? Zero, three pitch, go again. Defense reaction. Destroy the amulet of Haven Call. Search your deck for a card named Deck? My voice, man. Search your deck for a card named Rally the Rear Guard and add it to this chain link as a defending card. Then shuffle. Activate this ability only if you have no cards in hand. Th th what? What? <laughs> this card. It's hard to evaluate. First of all, you have to be running Rally the Rear Guard in your deck to make this even work, which is pretty bad outside of like some Brute decks, I guess. Like like red Rally the Rear Guard's okay in Brute decks because it's a card that you can block with and then it has an instant effect of discarding cards from your hand to pump its own defense. So you can discard the cards that don't block at all to, to pump it. But if you're playing the Amulet of Haven Call, you have to be running the Amulet of Haven Call as well, which also doesn't block. And then also running Rally the Rear Guard I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know about this one. Uh, it's really cool and interesting. And you can only activate it if you have no cards in hand. I'm not sold. I'm not sold. Next up, we have Amulet of Oblation with absolutely freaking gorgeous artwork. Huge shout out to this artist who is super, super underrated. You should definitely go follow them on Twitter. They've got like 200 followers or something. And they're like, an, their, their art is amazing. So highly under like the definition of like underrated like genius like so good anyway go again and it says instant destroy amulet of oblation until end of turn target attack action card gains if this would be put into a graveyard instead put it on the bottom of its owner's deck activate this ability only if a card has entered a graveyard this turn i like this card i think it's interesting and i think it has weird combo potential it, it does kind of like a drone of brutality thing but for any card or rather any attack action um i like it i don't know i can't think of any place it fits in right now but it's it's cool and does something cool so i don't know i think there's a spot for this somewhere it's, it's a cool card and once again go follow the artist alexis uh suzani i think that's how you pronounce their name? I'm not I'm not sure. I'm really bad with names, but 
They're great artists. They do a lot of like beautiful landscapes. Uh, next is healing potion. Uh, we finally have a healing potion. This is kind of like a no brainer and I freaking love the art on this one as well. I love the concept. But also, I love the concept of the amulet of oblation too, with like the little, the little sprout growing, growing inside of the amulet. It's really cool, and the healing potion has like a, like a meadow. It's got like a, like a, a grove or something in there with like trees. It's beautiful. I, I this card is beautiful. Um, it's a really simple card too. It's just like it's an item. It just says action, destroy healing potion, gain two life, go again. It itself doesn't have go again. I mean, maybe you can play this in your. Hmm, in your Icelander deck? I don't know. But it's actually really cool to see, like, a healing potion in Flesh and Blood. Um, there's a, there's a lot more potions now, and I just, uh, I got my fingers crossed that we eventually get an Alchemist, because it's gonna be so sweet with all these potions. Speaking of which, we have Potion of Deja Vu. I freaking love this potion as well. It's got, like, an hourglass in the, the drinky spit, I don't know what you call it, the... You have your bottle and then you have the little the little bit on top. I don't know what you call that little bit. That's It's got an hourglass in that little bit. Um, it's really cool looking. All right, so it's a zero drop. Instant, destroy potion of deja vu. Put all cards from your pitch zone on top of your deck in any order. I want to play this card and I want to pitch a heart of Fiendle and I, I have a Fidia and then crack my potion of deja vu and put them both on top of the deck. Oh, dude, that's so good. Um, and it's hilarious too because you're gonna get you're gonna get clapped because neither of those cards block. It's so it's good. Or like um, the Arknight shard, you're gonna make some you're gonna make some rune chance. It's pure jank from what I'm saying. There's probably some really really cool like combo potential with this card. I love this card. Also the artist uh, Sod uh, Irfan, awesome artist. Uh, no no surprise that like there's so much color and like pop to this one uh really really cool um I don't, I don't know if it's good but i think it's another one that has like, a lot of potential next up we have potion of luck it's a genie bottle dude it's a genie bottle um once again blue zero instant destroy potion of luck shuffle your hand uh, and arsenal into your deck then draw that many cards um i don't know this is hmm it's an instant right so this is a way for wizard to get a five card hand on your opponent's turn because you arsenal, right? So you, you have your potion of luck, you arsenal a card, and then you drop to four, right? And then you pass. And then on your opponent's turn, you're like, okay, I instant pop my potion of luck, draw five cards. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's what you do with this. Hmm. Is this good in Icelander though? Hmm. Probably Kano, probably, probably good in Kano. I don't know. It's cool. I think they're. I think. I think wizards are gonna abuse this thing. Next up, we have Talisman of Balance. So this is not a potion. It's a talisman. It has go again. It says at the beginning of your end phase, if you have less cards in arsenal than an opposing hero, destroy Talisman of Balance and put the top card of your deck into an empty arsenal zone you control. I am a hundred percent playing this card in Ultimate Pit Fight. This is an amazing multiplayer card. Period. This is a multiplayer card, and it's sweet. I think it's a sweet multiplayer card. I think a lot of people are gonna play this in multiplayer. Um, I don't know. I just really, I just really like it. It's, it's a good way to to build up and get a get a nice card. So, especially like in maybe like Ranger or something. We have like your New Horizon. So you have like two arsenal zones. So you can kind of play around with it. I don't know. I think this card's cool. Next up, we have Talisman of Cremation, and we have some like sweet like metal artwork. I mean, that looks like a Met, like an old 90s metal album cover or like old D&D art. Um, once again, by Enrique Linder, Lindner. Uh, zero cost to go again. When you play a card from your banished zone, destroy Talisman of crem Cremation and name a card. Banish all cards with the chosen name from each opposing hero's graveyard. Um, this is a weird card. This seems to be like something that could be really good later in the game, but right now doesn't do a lot. I don't know. I don't know. There's not very many classes that can play stuff from their banish zone anyway, like the shadow talent characters, and then that's it, basically. I don't know. This is a weird card, and it does a weird effect, and now it doesn't do anything, but in the future, it might be really good. I don't know. Weird. Next up, we have Talisman of Featherfoot. Beautiful. 
uh, has go again, zero drop. This is a, a yellow pitch card. All the other ones have been blue so far, but the Featherfoot has yellow. So it says, when an attack you control gains exactly plus one from an effect during the reaction step, destroy Talisman of Featherfoot and the attack gains go again. Yeah, this card's cool. I can see some applications for this. I can see you like setting up like a really sweet like wombo combo turn with this, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it seems good. Like the card that comes to mind immediately is like push the point because push the point gives exactly plus one and a reaction. So you can like your push the point also gives go again now. Like, I, I don't know. It's cool. I don't know if it's good, but <laughs> I don't, it's cool. I do want to play with this one. Um, and then we have the Skull Crushers. All right, so that was our hour-long Everfest video talking about all the spoiler spoilers up to this point. I'm going to have one more video talking about spoilers for Everfest, but it's going to have a couple excellent guests. I'm going to announce who they are right now. Um, it's going to be uh, DM Armada and Bill from the Spike Feeders, and we're going to be doing what I'm going to call the Everfest Roundtable Roundup, where we just talk about all of the spoilers after they've all been spoiled. It's very likely going to be that not all the cards have been spoiled because that's the way Legend Story Studios likes to do it. They like to not spoil everything, so there's still some excitement opening packs. But um, yeah, uh, it's re I'm, I'm really excited to have DM Armada back on the channel and also Bill on the channel for the first time to talk about stuff. Both of them have been on the channel recently in that Ultimate Pit Fight gameplay video that you should go watch because it's really, really cool. And really, really fun. Like, seriously, it's my the most fun I've ever had playing Flesh and Blood. Which is saying a lot, because I love this game. It's my favorite game. Um, but, um, yeah, it's going to be really cool to just talk about cards. And we're just going to geek out about Everfest and talk about our favorite cards of the set. And um, things that we're expecting, or, like, metas. And we'll talk about a lot of different stuff. We'll probably talk about Commoner. We'll talk about Blitz, Class Constructed, Ultimate Pit Fight. Just the cards in general. Like, our favorite flavor. It's going to be a lot of fun, so you should definitely tune in for that next week. Maybe Monday, maybe Wednesday, one of those days. So, in any case, thank you so much for joining me today. Joining me and Bravo today uh, to talk about Everfest. We still have uh, today's spoilers and uh, tomorrow's spoilers. Or, it'll be today's spoilers, basically. We have yesterday's spoilers and today's spoilers. Um, time. Wibbly wombly. Timey. Timey wimey. Anyway, I hope you all are enjoying Everfest as much as I am. I think this set's gonna be an absolute blast. I also, for those who have stuck around to the end, I think I might know what the, um, carnival slot is. I think it's going to be items. Like, things that you could win in a carnival. I don't know this for sure yet. This is not any insider information or anything. I don't actually know yet. But there are so many like potions and amulets and you know equipment pieces, helms and you know weapons and stuff. I think that's what the carnival slot is. I think it's going to be things that you could have won at a carnival. I don't think it's going to be alt art craziness like everyone's expecting. I think it's more subdued than that. So we'll see if this prediction is is correct but that is my guess uh at, at this point in time i've literally opened up one booster pack of everfest and i have no idea what the carnival slot is just opening up that pack because you'll see what i get in it but there's no way i could even tell what it is so this is gonna be fun this is gonna be fun um uh, my, my booster pack actually uh comes out tomorrow so tomorrow morning yeah it's going to be sweet. I, I got a Majestic. It's a sweet pack. So, uh, yes, stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for sticking around, everyone. And we will see you next time.